What is going on, Gunridge to School here, and good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Ark of Osiris is about to get begin for our friends in Kingdom 52. We were invited to join the Bob family, that's Band of Brothers, uh, and we're about to start watching their Ark of Osiris, which begins in 30 seconds. Bunch of folks popping into the chat. Welcome, Connor, Andrew, Neil, Biz. What is going on? I'm pretty pumped about today's Ark of Osiris. And I'll be honest, I was not entirely sure I would be able to uh, be awake for this time. We happen to be up, connected with some folks, and here we are. It's stream time. It's go time. So this Ark of Osiris is about to begin, and I'm pretty pumped. God sent, what's going on? Welcome to the stream, and here we go, entering into Ark of Osiris. Now, commenting on Ark of Osiris is something I'm pretty darn comfortable doing at this point, so I'll have a lot of opportunity to answer your questions as we go. Looks like folks are starting to port in over here on the red side, and gosh, I'm pretty sure, yes, our allies, our friends, and Bob are in red. Pretty pumped about that. See Sanity, welcome. Oh, you've been watching my war videos recently, have you? Yes, those have been pretty nuts. Those have been pretty nuts. Got to get my caffeine ready here. Woo. Black tea, that's the play this morning. Bada boom. All right. Rico, what's going on? Welcome to the stream. Echoes Gaming. Huh. Not to be confused with Echo Gaming. Welcome, my friend. Welcome. I know. Ah. Breathe a sigh of release. This isn't this isn't war. This is nice relaxing Ark of Osiris. Couldn't be easier. Where's my suit? I got so many comments about wearing the suit. Everybody wants me to wear the suit. <laughs> What's my next war video going to be about? I think I'm going to talk about how I gained so much power in a short period of time. I'm also going to have a bunch of other stuff going on in the background. Tony, welcome. Smokin', welcome. You were just binge-watching my war videos. Thanks for that. They, I mean, like, war is... It's kind of fun. It's kind of terrifying. At the same time, war's pretty nuts. Jansen, much love. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Biz, the interview went well. God sent. Yes, I went from 29 million to 35 million. I mean, there's not really a lot of secret to it. I got a lot of speed up saved up. I got a lot of sweep buffs, including a kingdom buff. Spend a bunch of money. <laughs> Spoiler alert. There's the video. I'll give more detail about all that, though. Dubes is looking for more commander guides. Wow. Check out my commander guide playlist if you haven't already. Um, let's start to talk about this Ark of Osiris. What do I want to see at the start of this battle? It looks like there's not as many folks in blue as there are in red with Bob. What I want to see at the start is a fan out across the map capturing as fast as possible each of the objectives that is capturable. That includes initially these three outposts, and the battle starts in two, one, game on. They're off to the races. Now, the obelisks will be capturable, I believe, let's see, is it is it right away or is it within the first three minutes? It is right away. Um, and then it will take three minutes for it to capture over. So what they should be doing is sending Tier 1 Cavalry to each of those objectives so they can tip it over and start to get the clock ticking uh, to convert it to be something under their control. In the meantime, I like that it looks like multiple folks are going to each of the outposts and the obelisks are, are all covered and the enemy is making their way over to this obelisk as well. What are we up against here? It's 21 combatants for CO and 26 combatants for Band of Brothers. Maybe I should be saying that with like more fervor because there's an exclamation point. Exclamation point is like Band of Brothers. <laughs> all right. Sorry. I'll stop. Okay. Now, let's see how um, 
the other alliance is doing. They are going to the obelisk. They are going to the one of the outposts, two of the outposts, three of the outposts, and the obelisk. I mean, look, this is the kind of opener that I want to see. Now, the thing that most folks are doing that I don't think you actually have to do is that you don't have to keep your army camped in the obelisk. Once you put your army in there, it starts the clock. I'm pretty sure you can leave at that point, and as long as the enemy army doesn't occupy it, your timer is ticking down, so you can send your army elsewhere. Now, if you're using a Tier 1 cavalry army like I will be, I'll be using one single Tier 1 cavalry unit as I march my army over later today. Um, well, they got there really fast. First outpost grabs by Band of Brothers, and, like, look, you can see the difference here between having commanders that go fast and commanders that are not as fast. That's pretty impressive that this obelisk has already been grabbed, and presumably they'll arrive over here pretty soon. Let's see, what do we got here? Aha, yes, the Tier 1 Cavalry strategy being employed. Looks like they've got 50 of them. 50 T1 Cavalry, and not a single objective captured yet for the folks in blue. So not only do they have less players, but they also are not getting a jump on the start of this match. Yikes. Taking a look, ah, there we are. CO starting to grab some of those objectives. Let's just take a look quickly into the comments. Hey, hey Malkov, what's going on, my friend, from VYG and my kingdom? Good to see you. Cheers to you, Caffeine. Mm. Okay. Groovy Goat. Hey, Chiss, I recently got Kusunoki. What talents would you recommend to me, and who should I pair with him? Uh, Kusunoki, I would focus on either the skill tree or the archer tree if you can bring a full march of archers. I really never focused on archers in that way, so skill tree is a great place to start. He's also a fine garrison commander. He's my backup garrison commander, rocking full garrison with rejuvenate from the skill tree to amplify his rage generation. I've currently got him at level 55. So now we see both sides have laid claim to each of the territories on their sides of the map that are capturable now. So what should they be doing? Both sides need to posture forward immediately to the altars and shrines that are further up. You can see here next to the shield on the left, the countdown for when these are capturable, a minute and 22 seconds. But why wait past that minute and 22 seconds? The second that timer ticks down, they should have an army that goes into each of these structures and captures it. And quite frankly, it's entirely possible that your Tier 1 army should be postured even more further forward to the enemy objectives, assuming that they may not have an army there to capture it. Now, in this case, it looks like Blue is going to have armies available to capture those objectives. And that is exactly what you want to have those armies forward to be battling in those positions. Something that we're going to be changing about our own Ark of Osiris strategy this next time around is that uh, normally I tell the group that's going to teleport that they should keep all their armies back so that we know they can teleport. But if you put one of your armies into a structure, you can still teleport. So I'm going to have them sending their armies forward this time around, the teleport groups, one to each of the Shrine of Life and the Desert Altar for the side that they're teleporting to, um, so that they can capture them the second that they become capturable, and then they still can teleport because their troops are going to be within those structures. They're going to be closer to the action. There's a little bit of risk if you do that, if someone doesn't know what they're doing. But look, if they do know what they're doing, and they should, then you can do work, and that's the thing that we're going to try to do. Our matchup in uh, Ark of Osiris is kind of remarkable. We have like a 220 million power lead on the opponent that we have. So I hate to say that it's probably going to be a steamroll in our favor, but it probably is. And here we go. The center objectives now becoming capturable. You see here this blue player is in CO actually playing forward in the way that I suggested. And I think that's smart, smart play. If they've now scouted this, and hopefully they have, they know what's in there and whether or not they want to tango. It looks like they're going to go for First Blood in Ark of Osiris, and there it is! Wow! So because they used only a speedy cavalry unit but never brought forward one of those more impressive armies as I was describing, they were able to get, grab this for, for free, basically, from Bob, and that is some smart play. This is why, by the way, I was just talking about bringing a more advanced army forward if you can.
Now let's get a look around the map to see what else is cooking. And man, stuff is cooking. Bunch of folks teleporting to the right side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It looks like we've got a full press on the right side of the map. And that is really interesting to see. That is really interesting to see. I would hope and expect that if they're going to make a move like that, that there's going to be some rallies going hard on the Shrine of Life. And this Desert Altar, which is still unclaimed. Oh my goodness, the crisis of organization here. Blue Squad starting to teleport, but because they got the slower start, they're going to be slower to teleport anyways. Only two ported forward. Feeling like uh, Bob is looking a whole heck of a lot more organized in their approach here, and they've recaptured this Desert Altar. Blue Squad starting to teleport up to that obelisk, and in a few short minutes... The Temple of Osiris is going to open up. The Ark of Osiris worth 3,000 points. That is a 3,500 points. A pop in the center map is going to be capturable. And I'm eager to see what happens there. I think these guys are maybe a little premature and posturing forward to protect this area. In fact, I would argue they may as well charge even further up and cause more havoc. One of those players is certainly doing that. Let's get a look here. Can we identify some rallies or big action on this side of the map? Not yet. Not yet. A part of what makes Ark of Osiris special is that you can do a one-minute rally, and a one-minute rally is really fast. Um, there's actually Alliance technology called Fast Rally that reduces your rally time by an upwards of a minute when you're hitting player cities, and that actually does not work in the Ark of Osiris because then you'd have a zero-minute rally. It doesn't exactly make sense, but honestly, a zero-minute rally would be amazing. Like, people can join your rally later, like, as the army is already hitting. Anyways, we'll talk about rally reinforcement another time. We're going to try to find where the action is here. Soon there will be some really big skirmishes, and I'm excited for that. And look, you know, in this first part of the game, you should have several armies, assuming you're not one of the folks that's going to teleport, in this area around your starting zone right? Like all through here, you should have armies that are farming the caravans because they're these are safe caravans. It's unlikely the enemy is going to come to those. Now let's go to where I think there might be some action. Band of Brothers occupying the Sky Altar. That's the thing we knew. You know, there it is. That's what I wanted to see, that one-minute rally, that one-minute rally firing off, making their way over, and we're going to watch the combat over by this Shrine of Life. It is going to get Real hot, real fast. And it looks like... Who's leading this rally? Where did you go, rally? That's right, I saw a Barca. I saw a Barca in this rally. And that is pretty exciting to see. We're working on Barca ourselves. Ali asking if the war in Kingdom 51 has ended. Hashtag spoiler alert. I can't spoil it. I can't spoil it, but if you want to see, head over to our kingdom, check out the power of my alliance, check out the power of Marvel, and that will tell enough of the story. Insanity saying there was war in Kingdom 1138. Man, let me tell you, war is fun, but a whole bunch of people quit, which is not fun. So I don't know what, what to do about that. Um, it's tough being beaten in war because you lose a lot of troops and you lose a lot of resources and it feels pretty rough. Skylar saying caravans really help that much. Yes, indeed, they do, my friend. They do. A part of the reason I love watching these is that we're going to keep a very close eye on the scoreboard. At the end, especially, it gives a breakdown of where all the points came from. And you'll be shocked to see that an upwards of 20% of an alliance's points could easily come from farming those caravans. Caravans are a sweet, sweet play. And honestly, um, very crucial. All right, scrolling back up to catch up to the comments as I kicked us off at the beginning of this arc. Theomir saying he watched my video on the arc. After that, he got first place in his arc battle. Nicely done, my friend. Nicely done. Nicely done. Dubes saying he's already 9NKJ every vid. Oh, he's wa probably watched every video in, in my uh, Commander Guide playlist. That's awesome. The Commander Guide playlist is pretty sweet. I'm eager to see when Saladin and Constance, Constance or Constantine, become available. Anyways, we've got a rally hitting, and they're combining it with a swarm attack into the Shrine of Life. I love the positioning of these 
players here. They're making it so that if Blue wanted to reinforce, they could try to cut them off. Oh, but Blue comes from the other direction, a direction I certainly didn't expect, farming the caravan. Smart little maneuver there. Too little too late, though. I think this Shrine of Life is going to convert pretty handily over to Bob, and we're going to have to look around the field to find some more combat. Where else is the action in this battle? Bada boom. Sending those players home with haste and some open field action here. <laughs> it looks like we've got two Sun Tzu's that have met in the battlefield and more support coming in the form of a Barka and a Minamoto, although I think the, our friends in Bob have got a lot of... Uh, armies nearby that can come and support this. There it is. Now, if you wanted to hit this army right here, the thing you should do is use free movement to go behind this army because it does area of effect damage, then turn around and start hitting it. That way you're not getting basically hit for no cost to them for free. So we see now these, these player in red who was in the initial skirmish is retreating, and this whole mess is making its way toward the Shrine of Life. This might be a alpha player here because they're using a Barca. Hard to say. You really only have to be VIP 10 to have picked up Barca at all, so it may or may not actually be a powered player. Hard to say. Those don't look to me like T5. So I'm going to guess that it is not a super high-powered player, and they are on their way out. That combat is just about over. A dozen of the armies in red to the two in blue. The We have action, however, over here at the Desert Altar. Let's check that out. Swarm attack going in with Lohar leading, which is... Let me tell you guys, I love rage tanking. This is not a thing you should try to use uh, for... Ark of Osiris or PvP, unless you really do not have any other commander that you can be using. Yikes. We've got a question here. When will Saladin come? You know, I don't know. What I do know is the devs have revealed that it will likely be a mighty governor event that he comes from. So I'm already starting to save up my training speedups for whenever that might happen. We've got our friends in Bob going to reinforce this altar, and it looks like it's already very well reinforced. Um, however, Blue Squad smartly playing out behind the altar to try to prevent folks from getting into it for free. The reason that you want to get into the altar to defend it rather than fight in the open field is that, look, like if you've got a million troops and your enemy has an a march of 200,000, that March of 200,000 is going to get wrecked. Even if they've got better commanders, there's just overwhelming numbers do serious work. And it's possible this player is running the other way now because they already have an army in the structure. You can only have one army in each of these structures. So um, often I've sort of commented, like, why is this person in the open field when they should get in the structure? Sometimes that is because they've already got an army in the structure. <coughs> wow, and in this case... We've got a rally coming in on the Desert Altar. This army now finally making it in to reinforce, potentially? Or are they going to attack the rally? A suicide mission for sure, but sometimes you do whatever little bit you can. However, this altar is taken. It has been overrun. I kind of question why some of those players were doing individual hits when they knew they had that rally coming in. They're just sort of accumulating a lot of severely injured units, and that comes at a big, big cost because, look, in many ways, this is a battle of attrition. Now, we've got an ARC carrier here, and you know my feelings about carrying the ARC. Well, it looks like it's been dropped. Those are, I believe, Tier 5. We might have a Tier 5 player here. In Don't Hide Ovo, is that, am I seeing that correctly? Or maybe that's just a special unit. I'm not exactly sure. I'll say this. You can see here that when you carry the arc, it reduces your march speed by 50% and increases the damage you take by 200%, which is particularly savage. Um, you should really only be carrying the Ark of Osiris if and only if you are 100% safe to bring it where you are going. That said, Red actually is now in that position uh, where they could bring it pretty safely, and they've got a carrier going to pick it up. That said, oh, I don't know about that. 
Blue is going to have words. CO is going to have words. They're going to send a bunch of armies. In the meantime, also, Bob has got some open field combat going on by the enemy's desert altar. This is kind of a dangerous place to be engaging in an open field combat because you don't really know how many armies are sitting in this desert altar. They can pop out. They can wreck you before you have a chance to get away. And, you know, my feelings on non-cavalry armies is that they're very risky to bring out on the battlefield. Now, why is that? Um... Non-cavalry armies simply don't have the mobility, and they don't have the talents that offer the mobility when they get weak. The talent that I'm referring to for cavalry in the cavalry tree is charge, gives you a 30% march speed boost when you're below 50%, and that will let you get out of most bad situations. But this army here from Bob is completely surrounded with nowhere to run, and look, running is a terrible option here because they can't outrun this enemy. Now we've got... The arc moving, the enemy making their way toward it, and this arc is far from secure. Far from secure. You need to take the arc to one of the structures that you own. I would be headed toward the Shrine of War, which is in the direct opposite direction of the folks in blue. It looks like they are instead making their way over to their city or perhaps this outpost. Um, I don't know that going to your city will actually capture it, and this guy's going to get gunned down handily. Handily, it looks like they're going to try to help, but like, look, there's nothing that this Boudicca army can do to slow down adequately uh, a proper Minamoto army. And this looks like a T5 army with Minamoto making its way over. Oh boy, this uh, guy here is not going to stand much of a chance. And you can see they sort of figure out that they're not able to do much work here. They're on their way out. So this army is going to get run down in a heartbeat, and you can see that 200% damage plus T5s doing damage to siege units, doing serious work here. And now the question is, are they going to pick it up? And I think they are, and that's a huge mistake. Well, it would be a huge mistake, but nobody in red is contesting. I still think it's not a great idea, because now you've got your T5 player, who might be the fastest, going super, super slow, and we've got, what do they have here? 250,000 T5s that are about to get melted. So blue has to support this very heavily or they're going to get in trouble. And the only way that this player can actually drop the Ark of Osiris, and they can, is to actually go to a caravan. That will drop the Ark of Osiris. That will drop the Ark of Osiris. Now let's see here. We've got action going on up in the top part of the field. What kind of action is it? Uh, just an individual army attacking the structure. Okay. The way that I know that there's action, by the way, is that in the mini-map, you'll see flashing of the objective where there is currently combat. Now, Dubes is pointing out smartly that scouts are great for Ark of Osiris, and they are. Scouts are essential. I'll say I really got myself into a spot of trouble because I was scouting a whole heck of a lot at the start of the arc, but then couldn't figure out why I couldn't teleport, and I realized, like, oh yeah, you gotta have all your scouts back, too. Noob mistake. It's fine. We learned. But now, tunnel vision for the player carrying the arc, and that's the way to do it. They are just super vulnerable. It doesn't matter. They've got T5. Doesn't matter that they've got T5. They're gonna get melted here in a moment. And I, I'll admit, they're doing better than I thought they would. Uh, once these armies focus in on it, they're going to be in serious trouble. More T5 coming to support it. It's not going to matter, though. This T5 melting relative to how fast they normally might take damage. Impressive, though, how well the T5s are holding up. But they will fall. There it is. This army is running away, and they should. There's more T5 beating on them. Um, just because they took down this army doesn't mean that they're out of the woods. In fact, they're going to have to send a bunch of armies to try to capture this arc. And why does this arc matter? My friends, this is anyone's game. This is still anyone's game, and 3,500 points either secures red as a dominant player in this match or puts blue as the leader. So we are far from over here. In fact, I love how even this matchup is. Christian asking if I want to stream their arc at uh, 20 UTC today. Uh, unfortunately, that's the same time as when my arc will be. I might be streaming mine. I might be uh, recording it for later to be determined, but I certainly will have my hands full. 
Augustin saying, Chiskul, I'm kind of tilted. We're outmatched. They're fighting $341 million to $571 million. Ouch, my friend. That's really tough. What I'll say is that you should show up in force. Bring every single player, 30 out of 30. Fight hard. There's a chance they don't show up. There's a chance their power players don't show up. I know one alliance in my kingdom could only find 20 people that could confirm the time. And they asked me, should I register with 30 people or should I just register the 20 that I know can be there? And I said, look, just register the 20 <laughs> that you know <laughs> will be there so that hopefully you get an easier matchup. But they may have registered a bunch of people that can't make it. So I would show up in full force and be ready to fight. In the meantime, we've got a rally coming in hot to the Desert Altar, which is where we know there's some T5s, including this T5 carrier who is about to get melted. He is unguarded, or at least his guards are too far away. Oh, man. This is getting spicy. This is getting spicy, and we've got a fair fight here. We've got an even scoreboard as these two alliances, CO and Bob, duke it out. Thanks again to Bob for inviting us to spectate. This is a sweet matchup. Theomir asking, the best hero combination for a free-to-play player, and there's not yet a legendary hero that they can work on. Um, you know, look, free-to-play player, I really like the combination of CPO and Joan of Arc for the open field. It allows you to support your allies. It also makes you pretty tanky. The problem, however, is that you have to position yourself well, and you know, unless you're pretty serious about the game, unless you've got a lot of practice, you may not know how to position your army. So that said, I think cavalry may be one of the very best options for free-to-play players. I'd work on probably uh, Belisarius and Bybars, make them speedy so that you can get away from combat that's not going favorably, and you can pick off armies that are favorable for you to hit. That said, the arc has collapsed. That T5 player, I mean, look, T5 is cool, but those troops get melted. Meanwhile, this altar getting super reinforced, and they are melting the rally. Impressive work from CO. This rally is going to have to get reinforced by the uh, our friends in Bob, or it is in trouble. It looks like instead they're trying to protect their carrier, and I will say, if this rally simply distracts them from hunting down this carrier, then the rally has done its job, but I don't think that's going to be a thing that will be successful, and I think we've got, yes, indeed, T5 taking down this carrier, and they can take down carriers all day, every day. In the meantime, we've got Barca smashing Minamoto in a rally, and it's unclear to me who's going to win in this combat, which is looking really sweet. I'm going to zoom out so we can see all of it at the same time. Heck of a fight going on here. Heck of a fight. Zehez is saying a 70 million power guy. Oh, it could be that this player Ovo that we've been watching is a 70 million power player, which is a pretty, pretty impressive level of power. They are making their way over to the Desert Altar, which is looking like it is going to fall in favor of our friends in Bob. This is pretty close. And, you know, I will say it looks like the captain of the defense has changed, and there you have it. Rally successful. They capture that, and they're moving the arc into position. Love the ambush tactics going on here. Cutting off this player who's going to try to take out the carrier. Smart play, altar captured, and huge momentum in favor of our friends from Bob. Very, very impressive. Teleport coming in. Saw that out of the corner of my eye. Looks like Red is now supporting the left side as well as the right side. This army is not going to make it to the carrier. And honestly, I almost feel like the carrier perhaps should have been aggressive and gone forward here. That's probably too aggressive. Um, they're choosing to walk the longer distance. I kind of wonder if they could have scored at the obelisk, though, and why they didn't go to the obelisk. That said, if they go to this outpost, that's a pretty safe place to be running to. Um, easy points at this point, although... I wonder what army is sitting in this caravan. Part of the advantage of sitting in caravans is that people don't know like what kind of army you're bringing. They can't see that main commander that you're using. So I think that's generally a pretty smart strategy. We've got here two infantry armies in the open field. And you know, you know my feelings about infantry armies in the open field. Very dangerous proposition. You can very easily get outnumbered, outgunned, and you've got nowhere to run. 
We've got some combat outside of this desert altar, which is kind of exciting to watch. What do we got here? Herman and Tao into a Sun Tzu. Oh, one army, additional army showing up. Boudica. Now there's a Minamoto. So we've got some open field battling, and that's pretty fun to watch. Let's take this moment to catch up on the comments. Let's take a moment to catch up on the comments here. Gridlock saying, that doesn't matter. My alliance went with someone with 10 million power difference, and we still won because we played the objective instead of the kills. Oh, 100 million power difference. That makes more sense. Yeah, I mean, look, like they can always not show up, and you just win because they don't show up. Ah, Kusta saying, CO is your team. Good luck to you, my friend. Good luck to your allies. Plus is saying, what do we do against a pay-to-win player who has T4 after only two weeks in? I mean, join them. Uh, what do you do against a pay-to-win player who's got T4 only two weeks in? I don't know that that's that insane. The question is really if they will continue to their way to T5. Uh, and the way you battle a player like that is that you've got to beat them when you have superior odds on defense and when the kills work in your favor on defense. When you defend a flag, for instance, you're going to have 50% of your severely injured units die. They're going to have 100% of their severely injured units die. Um, the other thing that's really important, and this is relevant for Ark of Osiris, is you got to have the right captain defending that structure. you got to have the right captain defending the structure. Um, Who's the right captain? I mean, it really kind of depends, but generally it's the player with the very best research and the best commanders. The thing that I'll say that I always underestimated is the extent to which the research outweighs the commanders, which, like, it really does profoundly. Research is way, way, way more critical than commanders. Not even close. All right, more comments. Rolling in like crazy. Uh... Grindello asking, have I seen the war in Kingdom 77? I haven't. Ran asking what T5 is. T5 stands for Tier 5 Troops, the highest tier of troops available to research in the game, and one of the very last things you can research after you've maxed everything else out. Justin saying, keep up the great work. Thank you, my friend. I do appreciate all of the positive encouragement. Now let's get a look at this. What is happening over here? This is a little funky. It looks like this flag is going back to a city. Now... Here's what I'll say is smart. If what this player is doing is trying to stall, trying to stall the fight because they're ahead and they think they'll stay ahead and they're not sure they can capture the Ark again, then I think that's pretty smart. If you actually can capture the Ark at a city, that'll be news to me. Maybe it's capturable at a city as long as your city is like teleported out of the starting area. I don't know. Let's find out what happens here. Oh, okay. Captured in a city. Well, I'm a noob. Today we learned something, and this is why we watch Ark of Osiris and other kingdoms. Cheers, Smithy, for teaching me how to play. Okay. Where's the action? I see nothing flashing. I see nothing flashing. We got a little spice here. Looks like Frederick and one other army. And, and you know, I'm going to keep saying this because it's important. Infantry get caught out. They get caught out hard, and your whole army gets melted, and it's a real bummer. Um, it's part of the reason why I'm working on Martel right now, is that his expertise skill gives 20% movement speed, which I think is super excellent. That is like the difference between I can use infantry everywhere I want, and my infantry might get caught out and get completely wrecked. Big, big deal. Logan asking the right question as a rally coming in to this desert altar. Ooh, boy. How well defended will this be? It looks like we've got Ulji Mundok in the garrison. And I will say this. These structures do not count as garrisons, to my understanding, for, like, city defense talents. So I think the garrison tree is not the right tree to be using for your talents. And, man, is this Ulji getting melted. Ooh, boy doing work here with Minamoto into the desert altar reinforcements, hopefully coming to support this structure. They need it right now, or this thing is going to fall. 
this thing is going to fall. To answer Logan's question, is it important to choose a starter civilization with a good commander? I would argue yes. That is the important thing to do. Don't worry about anything else. Your starter civilization should be the commander that you care about the most. Which commander should that be? Spoiler alert. I think it should be Boudica. It should be Boudica because you want to get sweet, sweet 20% experience boost from her second skill for the entire time that you're playing the game. I mean, that just seems really, really good to me. From there, you swap to a civilization that you want to be using, and Bob is given a speedy trip back to town out of the Sky Altar. They've been evicted. This is still anybody's game, although I'll, po I'll point out that, like, look, this is a re reclamation, reclaiming the Desert Altar uh, back from Bob, so they're still just regaining ground they should have owned in the first place. But that said, Blue does have a one-structure advantage right now, and holy moly, is there a lot of combat going on over here. Holy moly. Let's keep up in the comments as this crazy open field combat unfolds. Hey, Chiss, better to take the Ark with a small army or a full army? In a lot of ways, you may as well just take it with a small army, because either way it's going to get melted, so you may as well just not have a lot of troops die in the process. That's my two cents. Use tier one cavalry. Why not? Troops are carrying it are going to get melted either way. Do you know the G family? One of them say they're your friend in real life. Um, could be. Could be. I have crashed. <laughs> uh, I've got a bunch of real life friends playing this game. Including some family members. Um... Okay, let's see if we can get this pulled back up. Ark of Osiris, in battle, in progress. Let's watch. There's there's the Ark. Let's actually, what's the spawn time? Another five minutes before that shows up. <coughs> Pardon me. Where was the action? Right over here. Whew. Okay. Hey, Chiskool, what epic commander fits best as the secondary with Charles Martel? Hmm. You really want to reduce the damage taken because it amplifies the effectiveness of his shield. So in that regard, it, <coughs> pardon me, just getting over a cold here. In that regard, Sun Tzu is really good. On the flip side, Sun Tzu's an AoE commander. Martel is not. I also really like Ulji Mundok as a pairing with Martel. I also really like Ulji Mundok, especially if you're bringing a full infantry march. And on the topic of full infantry marches, this guy's caught out. At this point, he should just turn around and fight because he's not getting away and he's not getting skill attacks. And he's an AoE commander. He could have been getting skill attacks this entire time. All right, Melted, they are heading back to one of their cities. What I want to find is where... There it is. Some action is in the open field. AoE, you may be seeing here, is incredibly powerful in the Ark of Osiris. And look, you really don't want to be targeting a Tier 5 player because you're going to melt. Um, but what you can do is you can use AoE and get incremental damage on them while you hit a T4 player. And that's a pretty decent strategy. That is a pretty decent strategy. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce your name, so I'll call you Joe. Oh, maybe I got it. Jogen, Jogen. We'll go with Jogen. I've got a mixed, I've got a maxed Minamoto. Suggestions for full cavalry pairing for arc for snipe, sniping armies in war. Um, Pelagius, very strong. I like also Cao Cao, um, optimally at the legendary tier. Why am I recommending Pelagius instead of a more mobile commander? By the way, we've got a sweet rally going on over here. Um, is that if you're sniping, what we're referring to is my most recent video. Uh, where essentially you stay in your city and there's armies near you and you pop out, hit them, and when you get targeted, zip back to your city, pop out, hit somebody else, go back to your city. You can never get focused down, so you don't really need movement speed. What you need is just heavy, heavy hitting. And, um, you know, it's possible some other legendary might be a good choice, but uh, if you're rocking full cavalry, I think Pelagius is the play. Pelagius is less mobile and does more damage. That's the, that's how you do it. Okay. 
Mr. Chu saying two weeks to tier four. Lol, I have players in my kingdom, 10 million power in one day. Free to play players should choose their alliances carefully if you want to go far. Yeah, it's true. It's true. A strong strategy is simply to ally with those very, very powerful players. And they can be a lot of fun to play with. Uh, you know, the... Oh boy, here's some open field combat. Although there's T5 holding it down over here, I will say, you know, in my kingdom, I've really enjoyed playing with pay to win and B. Two heavy, heavy spenders. I've enjoyed playing or talking with Bujan, who is... Um, on the opposing side of all of the fights that we've been on, super chill dude, tier five player. Um, I, I hope at some point he'll join with my alliance. I think that'd be swell to be on the same side, quite frankly. Anyways, um, what do we got going on here? Where's the arc? Spawning in 40 seconds. We're going to keep our eye on this air. Oh, no, we're not. There's action over here. Swarm attacks into this desert altar. Very interesting. I would expect that Bob is a rally that's going to hit here soon. And you can see they're very smartly positioning themselves between the structure and where all of the support for blue is going to come from. Very, very smart. And I love that they're pushing them out. I think that they should be doing that. They should be forcing blue to retreat because you can see they're skittish. They're skittish right now. And you should take advantage of that fully until your rally hits. And I hope they've got a rally coming in. I hope they've got a rally coming in real fast. I would make it a one-minute rally. Ooh, the Ark of Osiris has appeared. Excellent. For a second, I thought it said the Ark of Osiris has disappeared, and I was like, excuse me? It has what? Okay. More questions rolling in. Is Pelagius and Tsao a good combination in the open field? Yeah, sure. I would say it's a mix of smash and mobility, and I think that's a fine combination. Logan asking, Chisco, is it more important to choose a starter civilization with a good commander? Oh, yes, we talked about this. Boudica. Go with Boudica. Um, let's see here. Catching up to the comments. Hey, Chisco, would Sun Tzu be a great secondary commander with Richard? Sure, I think they're fine. Both of them do AoE. Generates a lot of rage. Uh, Sun Tzu does. It also stacks that damage reduction and a 10% damage reduction from Sun Tzu combined with the damage reduction from uh, Richard I. The only thing that's anti-synergy is that I don't think that the 20% damage boost to the primary skill from Sun Tzu has any effect on Richard I's heal. Hey, and there's the rally that I thought would be a swell idea. There it is. Excellent execution on the part of Bob placing their armies to scare away uh, the, our friends in CO, um, and now the rally has free reign to do work here. There's just one problem. I'm pretty sure they're rallying a T5 player, and this rally might need some serious reinforcement really, really fast, and all the armies that can reinforce it are too far away. Oh, my goodness. Well, this got interesting. Hashtag coffee ops. <clears throat> Pardon me. This rally is not going particularly well for our friends in red, but reinforcements to the rally can change that in a heartbeat. Whoo! We've got a Barca, and who else in this defense? Who else is in this defense? I see elephants, and... I can't figure out who the secondary is. It looks like we've got, perhaps, Mina Tsao in the rally, and the rally getting reinforced, that's the way to do it. Ah, it looks like the, hmm, no, I thought it, it I thought it might have been Belisarius supporting the rally, or supporting uh, the altar, but I'm not sure that's the case. The thing we'd be looking for is arrows. Oh, there they are. There they are. We did identify it. It is Belisarius. That's interesting. Barca and Belisarius, an unlikely pairing as far as I'm concerned, but sure, why not? Um, Barca cares about a mixed army, and Belisarius cares really only about cavalry. Um, but he does aid ending of fights and gives you a burst of movement speed when that happens, and so maybe that's what they're hunting for. Belisarius also does massive damage to armies that have been weakened, and like, look, if you're a T5 player, then yeah, you're going to weaken armies, and then you're going to get extra damage boost, and that seems pretty strong. So a pairing I probably wouldn't have been looking at first blush, but it works, and the structure is captured, but blue might have the ability to take this altar 
This open field combat is crucial. Blue will have a chance to get back in the game if they're able to capture this altar, and they are going to get shut out of it pretty darn quickly. That door closing, if red can capture this altar, this is a very important objective to capture at this moment in time. Let's scroll up in the comments and make sure that we catch up with, with these. Dubes is saying my alliance won their first arc event. The enemy tried the tactic of keeping hold of the flag from start to finish. Almost paid off as well. It's a smart tactic. It is a smart tactic if you don't think you can control the flag area to just not capture it and hold it off in somewhere that the enemy can't get to. Scuttlers is saying, does the gathering speed matter when gathering from caravans? I think it does. I don't know why it wouldn't. The Real Loco, which second commander should I use for Minamoto? Cao Cao in a perfect world, otherwise any cavalry commander of your choice. Uh, you could also use a generic commander like Boudica. Poplet, what do you think about rallying an enemy obelisk? I think it's a brilliant strategy. Do it. Catch them off guard. They may not reinforce it. Then teleport your units forward. Whew. Savage. Savage. This tier five, five player is desperately trying to move the Ark down the field. In my opinion, they desperately should go to this caravan, drop the Ark, turn around, smash their enemies, then pick it up later. But I don't think that's a thing they're going to do. Logan, I hate how the ads for this game are very inaccurate. I think if they showed real game ads, more people will play. Interesting, I haven't seen any ads for, the, for Rise of Civilizations. Um, okay. Let's see. Keeping up with the comments. Shadow Sniper. Hey, Chiskul, what commander is the best as a secondary for CPO? You know, I personally have been using Joan of Arc, and I use them as a pairing to support rallies, and if I get caught in the open field after the rally has ended in the Ark of Osiris, then at least I'm giving buffs to all my neighbors. Um, who do I think is a perfect pairing? Maybe Ulji Mundok, and you bring full infantry will be pretty sweet. And then Olji would be the primary. I think that's a pretty legit combo. I also like CPO primary and, and Olji secondary. I think is decent. Uh, Anna is asking, I'm not a pay-to-win player and need a good pairing for my Tsao Tsao. Any suggestions? I like Pelagius. I like Belisarius. I like Bybars. Each of them does different stuff. Bybars offers you some AoE, which is pretty sweet. Um, you know, there's also some generalists you could look at. You could look at Boudicca, strong with any type of troops. Um, you could look at Osman, do big, big damage. That said, I prefer Osman to be paired with a commander that uh, has the skill tree as the primary. What amount of resources is a good is good to start attack with? Well, I think I'll interpret that question to say, how many resources does a city need to have to be worth attacking? That, of course, depends on the number of troops that they have. It's a tough question to answer. I really am averse to losing troops and having troops die. Um, and in a perfect world, you'd lead that with a rally. Apologies if I didn't quite understand your question there. Damien, is Julius and Charles good together? Yes, I think so. You can bring full infantry. Use Charles as the primary. That seems reasonable to me. Um, the only thing that I'll question is whether or not the damage bonus from their active skills actually stacks. I'm not sure that it does. If you've seen my re recent video series um, called Does It Stack, I actually am pretty concerned that Julius Caesar and uh, Charles Martel's damage boost might not stack, in which case I think the pairing doesn't work. We'll have to test that and see. Notorious asking if I want to attack cities with Mehmed. Um, I lost the comment. Hold on one second. If I want to attack cities with Mehmed, who's the best secondary? Hmm. The best secondary, I mean, optimally, it's a legendary commander with very high skill levels, if we're talking best best. But let's say best legendary might be Caesar for city attacking, especially if it's rally, especially if it's getting reinforced. At the epic tier, oh, and there we go. Ark of Osiris down. Ark of Osiris down. If you're attacking as an individual... Hmm. Hmm. You really want big damage. I was going to say CPO. And I do like CPO because he's going to give 10% extra damage to the city. I think CPO is the play, honestly. I think CPO would be your play at the epic tier. 
Also, buy bars, I think, works, and you could bring full cavalry, and that would be pretty strong. We see here that red has pretty strong hold of this arc. We keep watching the arc because if blue captures the arc, they're back in the game. If red captures the arc, they shut the door. This is the defining moment for this arc of Osiris, in my estimation. And by the way, this is a T5 player here. What I think this T5 player needs to do is not pick up the arc. They need to just wreck these guys uh, as much as they can, leveraging the fact that they've got T5 and they don't. I mean, they might have T5, but I don't see it here. So what I think this player, Don't Hide Ovo, must do right now is to just do work on every single player that they can. Let one of their other allies pick up the arc if that's a thing that they really want to do. Smash uh, as much as possible. Do maximum damage. That said, they're turning away, which I think is not amazing. Maybe they're just turning away because they defeated an army, and when you defeat an army, your, your own armies will automatically retreat to your city. Maybe that's what's happening. But I think they should turn and fight, and I put I put my money on the T5 player with two marches, especially because more reinforcements are coming from blue, and, you know, this this match is not over. This match is far from over. The Portuguese dude saying, hey, Chiscool, cool, I just started playing the game. Congratulations, dude. You're in for a heck of a ride. Uh, and plan on being a heavy spender. Oh, okay. What civilization do I recommend? You know, depends. You're going to get a couple Civ swap tokens. Um, if you want to save on speed ups, you could go to China. If you're going to, depending on what tier of spender you are, if you're a big, big, big spender, by the way, I'm suggesting China for the 5% building speed. Uh, you could also go to Korea for the 3% research speed. That's where the big, big, big spenders go. But when I when I say big, we're talking multiple thousands of dollars. So if you're in the, the moderate spender range, rather than the whale level range, if you're in like the dolphin range for spending, um... What civilization would I be? I mean, if you're farming resources like crazy, like I did, um, I think Japan is really great. Otherwise, I also really like, if you're going to play a lot and farm a lot of experience, I also really like Spain, which is also something I'd recommend free to play. Um, but like that 10% experience boost is pretty legit. We've got this open field combat still lasting, Red has picked up the uh, altar, and that's Smithy, who is, I believe, the Alliance leader. The only challenge here is that they're going to get melted pretty darn quickly by uh, those T5s. And, you know, I'm telling you, this is still anybody's fight. This is still anybody's fight. And with T5 in play, it's hard to say which way this is going to go, although clearly, clearly it is already in the favor of our friends in Band of Brothers. Justin saying, I chose Herman as my starting commander. Can I use him for PvP and with who? Yes, Herman is great. Herman is excellent. Uh, use any other... Hmm. Who should you use? I was going to say any other archer commander, but what other epic archer commanders do we have? Kusunoki would be a fine pairing. Kusunoki would be a fine pairing. Who else would be good with Herman? I like Boudica a lot with Herman. I like Boudica because she restores rage, and so that pairing I think is actually quite strong. You could also use Joan of Arc. I think that's reasonable. This battle looks pretty tame and clearly in favor of Blue. What I want to look at is what's going on at the Shrine of Life. Do we have a rally? We do! Crucial! Oh, man. For CO to get back in this game, they not only need to capture this darn thing, but they need to get their objectives back. And this objective is converting over as well, although a rally in on it to try to take it back. And that rally is going in the favor of CO. Ooh, this is looking spicy. And there you have it. Convert it over. Ooh, never a dull moment. In this relatively fair and even Ark of Osiris match, this guy getting marched back, smartly the T5 now playing escort rather than carrier. That is definitely the way that should go. We're going to keep our eye on this flag because there's a lot of armies coming in. 
A lot of Grammys coming in, so we're going to watch that. As we do, we're going to answer a bunch of questions here. Over 170 folks watching this Ark of Osiris. Great to have you all here. Thank you so much for your support. It means a whole heck of a lot to me. Uh, if you haven't already, liked, subscribed, would really appreciate that. So let's get a look here at some more of these questions. Raymundo, in my last arc, the Alliance took part and we were losing by 7,000 to 21,000. And at 30 minutes back, wow, you came back to win it. Impressive. Yes, the fat lady is far from singing in this arc of Osiris. And we've got an army trying to make their way to the carrier. But with two T5 marches playing escort, that is just going to be tough to do. C Sanity saying, yo, Chiss, what's your best advice on getting tier four as fast as possible? Just hit 1 million power and I'm upgrading to level 16 city hall. Need some advice on the best way to advance to tier four. Couple tips for you, my friend. The first is to try to take advantage of runes on the map that accelerate your building and research speed. The next is to take advantage of alliance research that accelerates your building and research speed. Spend the resources to actually research that stuff. Also, um, I will say that you should definitely upgrade your Alliance Help Center so that you get helped the maximum number of times before you speed stuff up and use up your speed ups. Those tips will hopefully give you some value uh, as you power your way toward Tier 4 troops. In the meantime, this match is far from over, but hey, wait a minute, what's going on over here? Okay, we had a little combat at the Shrine of War. By the way, we haven't talked about it in this particular battle, but the Shrine of War does give a solid 10% of stats, 5 attack and 5 defense. Very, very solid. Meanwhile, we've got folks trying to get this carrier, but we've got critical mass on behalf of CO defending the carrier. That said, Red taking full advantage of the fact that CO is distracted. They are swarming this Desert Altar and possibly the Obelisk. They are swarming the Obelisk and they just might get it. Oh, boy. Okay, sorry about that. Just getting over a cold, as I mentioned. Daniel saying, hey, man, I've been watching for a while. Happy to learn with you and watch you daily upgrading your game knowledge, which is very satisfying. Keep up the work. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the praise. Keep on smashing your kingdom. Anna saying, hey, for Ark of Osiris, I'm using Bybars and Sun Tzu, both maxed full cavalry, and they're doing... Pretty good. Hey, glad to hear it. That's an interesting pairing because Sun Tzu cares about infantry, but not that much. So, uh, cool. I guess Bybars would be the primary. Now we see a swarm attack coming from CO to take their obelisk back, and that's a smart play. That's a smart play because we knew they only had one march in there, and that march was weakened. And, you know, look, swarm attacks are costly in terms of severely injured units and the resources that go into that, but... When time is of the essence, and it is when your obelisk has been captured, you don't need to be efficient. You need to move quickly. We've now got this uh, open field turning into a heck of a, a contentious battle, and that battle is about to, to fully unfold here. Multiple armies trying to take out this carrier and make their way over there. Meanwhile, multiple T5 marches, including an army with Minamoto rocking T5s, defending the carrier. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What do we have here? This is an infantry march as well, to trying to defend this carrier. But look, all this army has to do is connect with the carrier, and I think they are now. And that carrier is going to get melted. There it is. Melting as promised. Polpet saying, hey, Chiss, what's the best army to fight in the Karak event? I'm thinking of Lohar and Boudicca. Lohar Boudicca is great. That said, you should think about bringing multiple armies, and I know that costs a lot of action points, but it's more efficient than leading rallies earlier on, assuming you can fill multiple marches. So my advice to you would be to plan to have multiple marches. Uh-oh. I don't love this play. I really don't love this play. The strongest army on the field at this moment in time a Minamoto army with T5 cavalry has picked up the Ark of Osiris. Why don't I like that? That is the army that could have done the most killing, and now it has basically neutralized itself. It's eliminated itself from the fight. That said, maybe they're thinking, I've only got one last mile. The end is in sight. I've just got to crawl my way to this outpost, and if I can make it, 
We score the points. We're back in this match. I think that's what they're going for, and they will go all the way. Scoring the Ark of Osiris. There you have it. It'll show up back in the middle in five minutes. They're keeping themselves in the game. Oh, no, it's it's over eight minutes before it shows up again. And this battle's over. One minute and 32 seconds. Gosh, I lost track of time, guys. I was having so much fun. <laughs> well, at this point, everybody should just try to get as many points as they can for their individual score. Don't go anywhere yet. We're going to do a full breakdown of the points that were scored in this Ark of Osiris and where they came from. By the way, I would hope a lot of them came from caravanning, which I'm just going to get a peek. Who's doing their homework here? Not the folks in CO, unfortunately. That's a lot of empty caravans. I'd expect to see a lot of those full. How about our friends and band of brothers? I guess at this point, you really shouldn't be at these caravans, so maybe that's an unfair assessment. You have to actually march them back to your city to score the points, so it's too late to be assessing how, how the caravanning went. It's too late. But this is what you should be doing. Crazy swarm attacks. Score some points before the end of the match. They capture that objective. We've got a little madness going on over here. Some T5 going to go battle him. Congratulations are in order for our friends and band of brothers. And well fought by CO. Well fought by CO. I don't know who had the power advantage, um, but well played on the part of our friends and band of brothers. Very nicely organized. <coughs> Very, <coughs> pardon me, well executed. Nicely done. Notorious asking if I want to be a beast who's ready for any specialty attack, who's the best pairing. Um, you'd want a generalist army. Barca and like Caesar can handle just about anything. All right, there you have it. Let's do the important breakdown here. Ark of Osiris score, 3,000 points. Now, why... Why was the first one 3,000 and the second one was 3,500? Does the score go up over time? Is that what happened? It's not the same number of points for each scoring, I guess. In terms of occupation score, we know that Band of Brothers held more structures for more time. And you can see here, look at that. Look at that. 20% of the score came from provisions for both sides, roughly. Roughly. I mean, that's pretty significant. That's pretty significant. The provision score is huge. Farming those caravans is a big, big deal. If they had not, let's say it had been, in, had it been even on the provision score, this would have been a much closer match. But provisions are what put Band of Brothers significantly ahead. It's one arc of Osiris capture worth of score that they got ahead of CO. It's a big deal. Uh, Band of Brothers better utilize their teleports. And they both did about equal healing, and that's a ton of healing. They both did a ton of healing. Whoo ee. And you know, look, um the kill count's roughly even. All right. Very impressive. Now, if we go into our mail here, we can get a closer look at some of these stats. Let's just get a sense how many players scored over ten thousand to get the maximum rewards here. Uh only the top ten. So, uh, I mean, that's, you know, 33%. That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, in fact, I'd say that's pretty darn good. That's pretty darn good. Um, if we get a look, by the way, just to, oh, wait, let's go back to that real quick. It was 24 players versus 27. I mean, you know, look, if CO had the same number of players, would this have gone better for them? Yes. If CO had more players, would they have won this? They might have won if they had the full complement show up and Band of Brothers didn't. So, you know, organization's a big part of Ark of Osiris. Let me tell you, now is the time, by the way, for any last questions that you've got before we wrap this up. I'm just going to give a quick look over here uh, uh, to show you their Alliance members and what their power levels are. There's no T5 player. Oh, maybe there is. Maybe this player's got T5. Maybe there is one T5 player in this alliance, and I don't know if they were present or not. So there you have it. Ark of Osiris, Kingdom 52, Band of Brothers, big winners. Congratulations to them. Final questions before we go. 
Are there limited resources in the caravans? Yes, they are limited. Is there a way to win against pay-to-win players? Yes. You win against play-to-win players by beating them in situations where you have an edge, such as a flag defense or a city defense, where you've got strong reinforcements and you've got a strong garrison commander uh, to begin with. Lone saying, hey, I'm new to this game. I like your content. I have Minamoto and Mehmed um, the second. How can I level them up easily? You know, I don't think Mehmed the second is the best player or the best commander to focus on as a free-to-play player. I think Minamoto is a better option um, if you're spending money uh, or if you're spending very little money, max the first skill before you go any further. The thing about Mehmed the second is that he's really focused on battling cities. And, you know, I... Most players shouldn't be hitting cities. Ghost Rider saying, this is DBZ82. Thanks for streaming us. You're very welcome. Question here. Can you tell me a good secondary commander to pair with Minamoto, except from Sao Tau, Pelagius, Belisarius, um, or Bybars? All excellent. Ghost Rider saying that 69 million or T5 on CO really made it tough. Yes, they played pretty well. Vitad saying, hey, Ch uh, Chiss, I'm planning to build infantry troops with purple with epic commanders, thinking Sun Tzu is the main and Olji is the secondary. What do I think? I think that's excellent. Seidel, is there a similarity between Sun Tzu's expertise skill and Richard the First skill? Uh, I think what you're saying is, is there like um, synergy? And I don't know that there is. I will say that hitting more targets and generating more rage is, is honestly quite fine. I honestly think Sun Tzu... And Richard is fine. It's not perfect, but totally fine. And like, look, do I think it's pretty amazing from to get generate all that rage from Sun Tzu if you're hitting many targets to basically machine gun your heels? Yes, I think that's good. I do think that's good. Poplet saying, hey, I hope tomorrow we win Ark of Osiris 20 verse 30 with the same power level. Wow, good luck to you. Good luck to you. The few versus the mighty. Dio saying, hey, I've been watching you uh, your gathering video. Very happy to see your channel grow. Would you recommend Charles Mundok or Sun Tzu for infantry? I mean, if you've got Charles's first skill maxed out, Charles is amazing. If you've got more than his first skill maxed out, then I think, um, who would I recommend with Charles Mundok or Sun Tzu? I like, I think Mundok because I don't think Sun Tzu's damage boost stacks with the shield from Charles. I think Mundok is probably the play. Mundok is probably the play. Notorious saying, hey, Chiss, I've made fun of your voice before, but you're cool, bro. Keep it up. I will keep it up. Thank you. Wizzle. Uh, I've got an arc match tomorrow, and we have twice as many people, but the same power. That'll be interesting to see how that goes. Good luck to you, my friend. That Portuguese dude saying, my ceiling will be about $500 per month. That said, should I choose China or Korea? Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. Five hundred dollars a month. This is an interesting question. We need to look at the civilizations. If you're spending five hundred bucks a month, I mean, look. I'll say generally, Spain is just freaking awesome. If you're gonna play seriously, you're gonna battle a lot. Um, Spain is very, very good for resource production and experience. It's pretty good, and cavalry is a great unit. China, I think, is pretty darn good because you're going to actually use that AP recovery, assuming that you're playing aggressively. You're going to benefit from the building speed to get to City Hall 25 really, really quickly, and troop defense is a generic boost to all of your types of units. The only problem is that the special unit is an archer, and you really don't care about that. This is the same problem with Korea. This is the same problem with Korea. Oh, I misread that. $5,000 a month? Holy cow. I just like couldn't even fathom $5,000 a month. Well, okay, so if you're spending $5,000 a month, you're probably powering out toward T5 insanely fast, and Korea's your play. Korea's your play. It's going to save you a ton of speed ups. Go that way. And uh, that's impressive. You're going to be a beast. You'll probably hit tier five in two months, I would guess. Three at most. That's insane. That's insane. On that insane note, we're going to head out. We're going to head out.
My friends, this has been fun. I enjoyed doing this with you. Thank you so much for your support. It means a heck of a lot to me. Like, subscribe, comment. We're going to be back for more insane Ark of Osiris action, possibly later today with our own Ark of Osiris. TBD if we're going to record it to save for later or just stream it. And until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.